from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering PagerDuty Summit 2019. Brought to you by PagerDuty. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit in the historic Western St. Francis Hotel, downtown San Francisco. I think they've outgrown the venue. The place is packed to the gills, standing room only in the keynote. And we're really excited to have our next guest. Someone who's been in this industry for a while, really done some super cool and creative things. He's given the closing keynote. We're happy to have him here right now. And that's Mitchell Hashimoto from HashiCorp. Yes, Mitchell, right. great to see you. Great to see you too, thanks for having me. Absolutely, so just a quick overview before we get into it on HashiCorp for the people that aren't familiar. Sure, so uh, HashiCorp's a company that, what we try to do is uh, help people sort of adopt cloud, but more, more realistically adopt multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. And, the, the real world complexities that it, cloud isn't just a technical landing point, but it's really a, it's a way you deliver software. You want to deliver more applications, you want to connect them faster, you want to do this in an automated way, infrastructure as code, sort of all these modern practices. And we build a suite of tools to provision, secure, connect, and run those applications for separate uh, products that we sell. Uh, that you could adopt separately, you could mix and match, and that's that's what we've been doing for a long time. Uh, based all on open source software, we, we started purely as an open source community and have grown into an enterprise company. So that's 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 the elevator pitch. No, it's a great, but it's a great story, right? You're up at, you're up in Seattle, got some access to some cloud infrastructure, yeah. and, and really solved your own problem, figured out other people had that problem, and it really built a really cool open source kind of base software company. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the 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 amount of people that had the problem I was facing personally was orders of magnitude more than I expected. Um, I, I've told other people, I, we never expected to start even a business around this. It was just scratching our own itch, building technical solutions, but uh, as, as we sort of worked at startups and started talking to bigger and bigger companies, it just kept, everyone kept saying, yes, I have that problem. And, and it's only grown since then, so right. it's been uh, surprising. To say and, the, and the complexity has only grown exponentially. I mean, before oh, yeah. the, you know, years ago, there was kind of this bright and shiny new object called AWS. I mean, I love Bezos' great line that nobody even paid attention. Yeah. For six or seven years, they got a head start and, and kind of this rush, and now there's been a little bit of a fallback as people trying to figure out what to go where, and now yeah. it's hybrid cloud and horses for courses, so a lot of great complexity, which is nothing but good news for you. Absolutely, I mean, I, I've told this story before, but uh, our first year incorporating the company, I actually got hung up on by an analyst because I said we were trying to solve a multi-cloud problem, and they said that's not a real problem when it'll never be a real problem. They hung up on me, uh, and it was a bet then, and, and I think the, the expectation then was it was going to be AWS, it was going to be physical infrastructure, and the physical infrastructure, days were numbered, and it was going to get axed out, and it was just going to all go to AWS. And our conviction was that you would have both forever, and or for a very long time, and then people like Azure and Google and others would pick up, and, and that's been true, but I think what we didn't expect is the complexity that got introduced with things like containers and Kubernetes, because it's not like cloud adoption finished and the next thing started, it all came at once, and so now real, companies are dealing with the complexity of they're still trying to move to cloud, they're trying to get more out of their physical infrastructure, they're trying to adopt Kubernetes, and now people are starting to peck at them about serverless. And so the complexity is, is a bit crazy and we view our job as trying to simplify that adoption and make, make you get the most out of it. Right. And that was before you could get a piece of VMware inside of AWS, or you, oh, could yeah. get a, you could get a piece of the Google data center inside your own data center. So yeah. it just continues to get crazier. Yes, yeah. So, so you're giving a closing keynote on a new project you're working on, Vault. And it's, it's an existing project. Existing project, old, excuse yeah. me. But, but I think it, you talked about it before we turn the cameras on, it's really more of kind of an attitude and a, and a point of view and, and a way to go after the problem. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you can kind of Dig into it a little bit is what did you see, how did you decide to kind of turn the lens a little bit and, and reframe this, this challenge? Yeah, I think you know, the, the big picture story I'm trying to tell in the keynote is that you know, everybody, anything, you look around, you technical, non-technical, this table, that glass, like everything you look at, it trickles back to the idea of a small, one or a small group of people and it takes an army to make it show up on this table, but it starts by somebody's vision and everything was created by somebody. So. I'm talking about Vault, something we made, and 
you know, why did we create it, and, and why did we make it the way we did, and you know, that, another thing I say is, people ask, why did you start HashiCorp or have this vision, and something I constantly told myself was, why not me? Like, if someone's going to do it, why not me? It could be anybody. Like, I'll give it a shot, because why not? And uh, Bolt was that way. We, Armand and I, my co-founder, we, don't, we took security classes in college, but we don't have a formal security background. We didn't work in security in, in industry. So the odds of us launching a security product that uh, is so prevalent today, um, whether you know it or not, it's behind the scenes very prevalent, uh, were stacked against us. So how did that happen? And that's, that's sort of what I've been going to talk about. But let's go, but let's do dive into a okay. little bit on the security challenge because it's funny, right? Everyone always says, right, security's got to be baked in and yeah. you've got these complex infrastructure and everything's connected with APIs to other people's applications and oh yeah, it's delivered through this little thing that you carry around and maybe the network's not working well yeah. or the CPU's running low or you're running an iPhone 5 and of course it's not going to work on the most modern app. Yeah. Baking security all the way through, but that's easy to say, it's much harder to do. You know, still people want to yeah. build moats and castles and drawbridges, and that's just not going to work anymore. Exactly, so you, you exactly hit upon the two major issues that we recognized, or felt we recognized. One was that a lot of people were saying it, and very few people were doing it, um, and the reality was it was hard to do. Um, the, everyone knew, theoretically, what they should do. No one, no one thought, oh yeah, saving somebody's personal information, plain text in a database is a good idea. Nobody thought that. Everyone said, this should be encrypted, but Encryption is hard, so maybe one day. So no one was doing it. And then the other side of it was the people that were doing it were the world's largest companies because the solutions were catered towards this mindset of, of castle and moat, which works totally fine in a physical, traditional environment, but completely breaks down in a cloud world where there is no four perimeters anymore. It's <laughs> still you're, there, there. You're one API call away from opening everything to the internet. So how do you protect this and we've seen a lot of trends change towards zero trust and service mesh and uh, mutual TLS. There's a lot of stuff that happened and, and we sort of jumped on that. Yeah, so it's interesting. So you're using like multi-level encryption and I was reading a little bit on the website. It's way over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the, the, but base, it's, you know, the basics are just make encrypt, not encryption, make security, cloud infrastructure security approachable by anybody and a core philosophy of our company, uh, the Hashi and HashiCorp, Hashi my name, means bridge, and that is a core part of our culture, which is you can't just have a, a theoretical thing or a shiny object and leave people hanging. You've got to give them a bridge, a path to get there. Right. And so we say with all our technology, what are the crawl, walk, and run, adoption, periods. And with security, it's the same, is that to say you're secure means something totally different to everybody. For a bank to be secure, it's a lot more than for a five-person startup to be secure. So how do you give somebody a solution that they could adopt and, and check the security box for themselves at every path of the way? And Vault is one of those tools that we have individuals using it, and we have you know, the world's largest companies. Almost 10% of the Global 2000 are paying customers of Vault. Many more are open source users, and it scales that entire spectrum. Wow. Right? So you keep coming up with lots of new, uh, new projects. <laughs> As we get ready to flip the calendar to 2020, what are some of the things you're thinking about? I think the big one, you know, that our focus is right now is service mesh. Um, Vault is, we're a big enough company now where we always have teams working on every, every one of our projects. We have releases going out. Uh, the thing we've been talking about the most is the service mesh thing. I think uh, cloud as a mainstream thing, let's say, has, has existed for seven or eight years. It's, since it's been released, it's been over you know, almost 15, but as a, as a thing that people have said it's a good idea, seven or eight years. And you know, we've touched security now, we've touched how infrastructure is managed, we've touched developers. I think a place that's been relatively untouched and has, has gotten by without anyone noticing has been networking and network security. Uh, they're, they're really doing things the way they've always done things. And I think that's been okay because there's been bigger fish to fry, but I think uh, the time has come and networking has a bullseye on it and people are looking at what does networking mean in a cloud world and service mesh appears to be the way that that is going to happen and we have our own service mesh solution called uh, console and you know our approach is standard HashiCorp it's nothing new it's we're going to work with everything containers kubernetes vms physical infrastructure we're going to make it all work across multiple data centers 
and that is our approach to service mesh and solving that challenge. So what's the secret sauce? Uh, this, I mean, it, it's not that secret, right? It's just building. <laughs> just execute better. I execute, love it. <laughs> well, understand that this heterogeneity is the problem. I think. Right, right. I said this at our keynote a couple weeks ago that there are a lot of service meshes out there, and uh, nine out of ten of them are solving a solution for a single environment, whether it's Kubernetes or physical environment or something. And I think that's a problem, but it's not the problem. The problem to me is how do I get my Kubernetes instances uh, pods to communicate to my NSX? you know, services on my physical infrastructure. That is the problem. Uh, as people, whether that's temporary or not, and they intend to move to Kubernetes or whatever, it's that's the reality. And so how do you make that work? And that is what we are focused on, is solving right. that problem. It's just, I just I, every time I hear service mesh, I think there was a company a while ago that sold to CSC probably uh -huh. in like 2013. Didn't, I don't think it ended up as a, as a that's a good happy story, but uh, but they, they were early in on, on the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so last thing, PagerDuty. We're at PagerDuty, what are you guys doing with PagerDuty? Uh, sure, so we've been, a, I've actually been a paying customer of PagerDuty since before we even made this company. In my previous job, I was a customer. Um, we are now still customers, so we still use it internally. But in addition to that, uh, we do integrations across the board. So with Terraform, our infrastructure provisioning tool, we have a way to manage all PagerDuty as code. And as your complexity of PagerDuty rises, instead of clicking through a UI, being able to version and code everything and have that realize itself into how PagerDuty works is very valuable. Uh, from like a service mesh console standpoint, uh, hooking in the monitoring to the alerting of PagerDuty is a big thing that we do. So tying those together. So it's very symbiotic. Uh, I love PagerDuty as a user and as a partner. And, uh, there's a lot we're doing here. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting slide when Jennifer put up in the keynote, I don't know if you saw it, where it listed so many integration points with so many applications, but from the outside looking in, you're like, well, how are you integrating with Splunk? That doesn't make any sense. How are you integrating with ServiceNow? That doesn't make any sense. How are you integrating with Zendesk? Right? These are all kind of systems of record, but really yeah. there's some really elegant integration points yes. to make this one plus one equals three opportunity between totally. these applications. Yeah, I think uh, it's very similar to the stuff we do with Vault and security. It's like the, the core primitives, everybody needs them. Like with security, everyone needs an auto log. Everyone needs uh, traceability. Everyone needs access control. But rebuilding that functionality in every application is unrealistic. And paging and alerting and on-call and uh, events are the same thing. And so it's you'd rather integrate and leverage those systems and make that your nexus for that specific functionality, and that's where PagerDuty is awesome. Yeah, that's where we we step in. Well, Mitch, it's always great to catch up. Uh, good luck on your keynote tomorrow, and, thank you. and really, it's a really amazing story to watch what you got you, you guys have built. Well, thank you very much. You know, all right, he's Mitchell. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at PagerDuty Summit in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.